Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, I have an absolutely insane match for you. I've been having a lot of those lately, but this one, you definitely do not want to miss how this one ends. Hey, if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm not going to ask you too many times, but it helps out the channel, and I do appreciate it. And let's get into the match. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and lead off with my Furret, and my opponent tosses out the Slitherwing. So... Furret comes out looking like he's nervous to ask you a question on a first date, and at this point, I can go ahead and frisk it and see its heavy duty boots. Now I know, Slitherwing is honestly a problem. The main reason why is because this thing gets access to priority in the form of first impression. With Stab, that move hurts a lot. So what I'm gonna do is, go for a trick here. I know that they're gonna first impression, I'm able to take it, and then I can go ahead and trade items with this thing, as I'm gonna take its boots, so Furret in some boots, and I'd give this thing a Choice Scarf. Now the reason why that is important is because now with a Choice Scarf, if this thing opts to go for a first impression later, uh, you actually can't use that move twice in a row. So it kind of, it puts a little bit of weird pressure on the Slitherwing, and unfortunately at this point, since he was able to first impression obviously before I gave it the Choice Scarf, it can now switch its move, and uh, Scarf Slitherwing does outspeed for it and kill it. But, you know, all I was able to do is essentially just take that thing's item, but honestly, I'm kind of happy with that because, like I said, first impression is annoying, and that should limit... Uh, the amount of times they're able to kind of go for that. So, of course, my team working around the Alolan Raichu does not like priority. Also important to note, they have the Fake Out Ambipom. They have priority in the form of Sucker Punch, Bisharp. So, overall, at least trying to limit that as much as possible is the best thing I can do. So, on the free switch, they you turn into the Brute Bonnet. What that does is allows me a matchup here. I can see they go into that. And this allows me to bring in the Staraptor who can go for a U-turn. Now, this is four times effective. However, Thick Ass Mushroom is able to take it at about half. I expected a potential switch and then grab some even more momentum there, but they just stay in. And now there's two things you can be sure about. If you go for a play rough in a crucial situation, it's going to miss. And if it's a Mushroom dude like Brute Bonnet or Remugus, they're going to click Spore. So what I do is I switch into the Absolute Goat, the Pincurchin, sets up the Electric Surge, uh, which also makes it so if you're touching the ground, you cannot be put to sleep. We are out here protected by the Electric Terrain. And I must protect Pincurchin at all costs because I love this little dude. Uh, it's honestly a Pokemon that is pretty situational, but when when you need it, this thing is extremely clutch. So, uh, they actually stay in, they go for the Synthesis here, as I don't really have much to do, but what I want to do is just lay up a little layer of spikes. It basically throws some Legos over there and say, hey, come in barefoot at 3 a.m. having to go to the bathroom and step on those and see how you... See how you feel. So honestly, uh, Pink Urchin doesn't have a great match. I can't really do much with the Thunderbolt. And I decide to essentially just switch into the Forges here. The main reason is that I know that I can take at least one attack from this thing. And then I can fire off a nice little Specs Moonblast at it. Uh, after being able to outspeed. Which is funny because this Flower has never been out, be able to outspeed shit. But we come in. Uh, it goes for the Bullet Seed here. And even if it gets the 5 hits, we should be able to live that. So... It is actually going to hit us four times, which generally means that this thing's carrying the loaded dice. Whenever you see kind of uh, consecutive moves like this, they are going to be loaded dice. So uh, it does hit us four times, but now at this point, I'm fairly confident that I should just be able to knock this thing out with a Moonblast. Plus, there's not much on their team that wants to switch into a Specs Moonblast. So that's exactly what we do, and Brute Bonnet goes down. So that is amazing. We had a pretty solid team matchup against that thing regardless. Uh, just having the electric terrain to stop that thing from being able to put stuff to sleep is honestly extremely valuable. So... On the empty switch, they decide to bring in the Bramble Gas. Looking like a goofball over there, smiling like a doofus. And I'm thinking they probably go for something like a Rapid Spin. I do have that one layer of spikes. I'm thinking I can't really switch here. I could go Star Raptor, but if it went for anything other than a Ghost Move, I'd be in a bad spot. They do not go for the Rapid Spin. And the Poltergeist is going to kill me with my own Choice Specs. Takes my Choice Specs off my face and then beats the living shit out of me with them. And uh, down goes the floor just. But... I did sort of what I was able to do, um, I, but I wanted to do at least, that taking care of the, uh, the the Brute Bonnet is amazing, and now this allows me a free switch. So I figure it's time to start getting some of that uh, electric terrain shenanigans going, and I'm going to go into the Drift Blim, who does pop the electric seed. Uh, I've been using this team a bit. If you don't know, I go for that electric seed because that uses up my item, uh, activates my unburden ability, and now I am extremely fast. So what I can do is outspeed the Bramblegast and an Air Slash is able to take care of it. So that thing being gone is honestly pretty damn nice. That's a that's a Pokemon that uh, sneakily always is able to do shit. But. So now they're going to go ahead and bring in the revenge switch of the Bisharp. Gets hurt by some spikes, and now I'm thinking this thing definitely goes for a Sucker Punch here. Uh, so I can bypass that with a little bit of a Will-O-Wisp action and also kind of just hinder what this thing's able to do going forward. So it does go for that Sucker Punch. It's the best thing it can do uh, against the Drift Blim generally. And I do land the Will-O-Wisp. So that's going to go ahead and cut my dude's attack. And that is actually pretty nice. However, 
Unfortunately, I don't have a great matchup here with the Drift Blim, mostly just because both of my dual stab is essentially uh, not very effective, and I can kind of just... It's an interesting matchup, right? Because now with this thing burnt, I have a plus one defense. It can't really hurt me. I can't really hurt it that bad, but I decided to just go for the Shadow Ball. I spin like crazy, and uh, I'm basically just kind of fishing for a special defense drop, but essentially whittling this thing down with the Drift Blim is kind of just the most beneficial thing I can do at this point as it ends up going for a Thunder Wave. So that is quite unfortunate because generally I was keeping Drift Blim out here because I've activated, activated my Unburden ability um, and if I switch out, it goes away. So I'm trying to just take advantage of it, but now being paralyzed, I'm kind of in a weird spot. And now I'm thinking with the Electric Terrain gone, I can at least go into the Pincurchin here, set that back up, uh, and then potentially get a little Memento action and try to get a Lolan Raichu going, which is a little bit risky, right? Because I do have uh, still the Choice Scarf uh, Slitherwing, and they have the Ambipom with the Fake Out, plus this thing has Sucker Punch, so Raichu is not going to be super important in this matchup, but I figure I might as well go into it and see what I can make happen here. So, uh, I bring in the Lego. He goes for the Iron Head, which of course doesn't do anything, and at this point I'm thinking I can probably hit pretty hard with a Thunderbolt, but what I want to do is conserve as much electric terrain as possible, so I'm actually just going to go for a Memento. I would like to get some momentum going my way, and a certain way to do that is to just go ahead and off yourself. So, uh, the best case is actually when they switch, because they bring in a better matchup against the Pink Urchin, and they decide to go into the Slitherwing, who then is going to be taking this Memento, uh, which goes ahead and cuts that thing's attack. So, now with its attack dropped, I'm actually feeling pretty confident that Alolan Raichu, as long as I go for a Terra Electric, I should be able to take a, uh, a first impression. And then it kind of comes down to the point where can I set up the Alolan Raichu? Depending on the damage, we're just gonna have to see. So, uh, I do off myself there, but that opens up the door for basically the GOAT of the team, which is gonna be the Raichu. So again, it's kind of risky business with all the priority running around, but I do know that my win condition is actually gonna be the Star Raptor in the back. I can actually outspeed pretty much everything uh, and knock them out uh, with my Brave Bird, but it just comes down to You'll, you'll see. So I bring in the right two here. Pancake loving buddy is out here surfing around on some electric terrain. Uh, I am going to be faster, but of course this thing's first impression is quite annoying. And I decide to go for the Terra Electric. The reason is I'm feeling like honestly the first impression still does around 50%. Uh, and then an Ambipom fake out should be able to finish me off. But at least going for the Terra Electric here, I can essentially just live that first impression. And I'm trying to make it so that basically Star Raptor has less chip on it. Because if I bring a Star Raptor here, I get chipped by that first impression, uh, and then I die to a fake out from the Amber Palm. So I'm trying to conserve that as much as possible. I'm able to take that first impression, and then fire off a Psychic at my dude, and that does take care of Slitherwing, who is for whatever reason fighting type. Truly gotta be one of the least fighting type looking dudes around. But uh, Life Orb is gonna bring me down to below half, and at this point, they go back into the Amber Palm. So, the reason why I also didn't want to set up is because I actually have a good pressure on my team to kind of check this thing with the Drift Blim still. Uh, even being paralyzed, I can essentially just switch this thing in here, um, avoid the fake out, and then get some pretty solid damage on it as Ambipom can't do too much in return. Plus, I could try to get some Destiny Bond, but uh, being paralyzed is going to kind of ruin that opportunity. But I bring this thing in, it has to go for the fake out, which it does, and uh, we do see that this Ambipom, Ambipom is likely going to have to switch back out and take some more uh, some more spikes damage, so I just decided to go for the Air Slash, and they do still have the Bisharp on their side of the field, who does come in and feels the effects of, uh, of those Legos, because Pin Kirchin out here just damaging chip from the dead, and uh, this thing is below half, so I'm feeling like I can definitely win this matchup here, but I do get paralyzed on the first turn, which, you know, it happens, so... The combination of the burn damage and a few Air Slashes or Shadow Balls should put this thing uh, to the point where I can knock it out with the Drift Blim here. I don't have the benefit of my defense boost from the Electric Seed anymore, but uh, with that thing being burnt, it can't really Iron Head his way out of a wet paper bag. So I just go for an Air Slash here, um, and after basically this burn damage, it's looking like the next one should knock it out. And then Drift Blim uh, is going to be live at about half here, which isn't quite going to be enough to basically save me. But they go for one more Sucker Punch here, knowing that I'm going to attack, uh, and an Air Slash is going to put this into range where the Will O Wisp kills it. So that is how, the, how you slow play the shit out of a Bisharp, uh, and that takes care of it. So, very scary Pokemon out of the way, and uh, now it's basically a half-dead Drift Blim. I have Alolan Raichu and my Star Raptor in the back. Star Raptor being my win condition, I just gotta make sure I can try to make this play. So, the one Pokemon we have not seen yet is the Delphox, and this thing is kind of a wild card. Honestly, you don't see these things a whole lot, and it is able to obviously outspeed me being paralyzed and finishes me off 
with a flamethrower, which is fine. So I'm thinking, you know, this thing doesn't hit that hard. Uh, it's not super fast. So what I can do is basically just go into Raichu. Even with the electric terrain disappearing on that turn, I should be able to outspeed. Raichu is just naturally faster. So uh, the electric terrain going away is a little bit unfortunate because that would kind of guarantee even if this thing was Choice Scarf that I could outspeed with that Surge Surfer. But uh, I basically go into Raichu here as it's my best option and I go for that Thunderbolt. And it turns out... <laughs> The Delphox's Choice Scarf. It's able to outspeed Raichu, finish me off with the Flamethrower, and I'm thinking, uh-oh. The surprise Choice Scarf just roasted my ass, and now it has all come down to basically what I've been saving as my win condition, which is the Staraptor. So I know that the Staraptor can beat the Ambipom 1v1, but now the problem is I need to basically go for a Brave Bird, which is going to give me a ton of recoil damage, uh, and then it all comes down to how we act against the Fake Out. So... I basically am forced to go for the Brave Bird. Of course, I am going to be faster here because I am Choice Scarf as well. Uh, but, you know, the way the Star After works is essentially we just hurt the shit out of ourselves every time we attack. But we get some huge damage, which is able to knock that thing out. So the recoil is going to put me down quite a bit. And now I'm very thankful for them not having Stealth Rock on their side of the field because that could just be the difference in damage here. As their last Pokemon is going to be the Ambipom, I know that I'm going to be able to outspeed and kill it with a Brave Bird, but it all comes down to... Knowing that the Zambapom has the fake out, and there's nothing really I can do here other than just kind of let it play out. So it turns out he actually has the Terra Normal as well, which is kind of worst case scenario. It's going to go ahead and boost its stab multiplier to two times, and now fake out is looking pretty damn powerful against a Pokemon that is definitely not known for its bulk. So the Ambipom gets nice and iced out, puts the diamond on his head. Goes for this fake out. I'm thinking, please, if there's any chance I can live this, let's do it, Star After. I'm able to live it with 20 HP, which is actually insane. We do flinch, but Choice Scarf Star After is going to be faster. I can then fire off a Brave Bird and uh, essentially grab the kill on the Ambipom. So, Tails goes down. we able to knock out the Ambipom first. And as you're also going to remember, the recoil damage from the Brave Bird is actually going to knock me out as well. Uh, so that is going to result in an empty battlefield, but Ambipom going down first to my attack essentially solidifies the win, and uh, essentially a tie on this one. That was kind of one of the craziest matches ever. It really came down to even the, the Terra Normal was not quite enough damage to knock out the Star Raptor, but regardless, super fun match. I always love when games come right down to the last turn there, but uh, yeah, if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button. I really do appreciate all the support, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.